Hi 111, this is our video for section 2.2 and in this video we're going to be discussing the graph of a function. Right? And so this section starts on page 70 in your textbook if you'd like to follow along as we work through this section. So, so far we have considered um, functions in terms of their ways that we can represent them, right? We've talked about mappings uh, right, with the little arrows and stuff. We've talked about tables. We've talked about lists of ordered pairs. And in the last fit section and video, we talked about equations, right? And how we can um, know if a, an, an equation is in fact a function, right? Remember if it can be explicitly written y equals, right? And we just get one equation. Uh, and then we talked about how to find the domain of a given function, right? Uh, that was our section 2.1 video D, right? Um, but now what we'd like to do is consider the graph of a function. We haven't really worked with this too much, um, but let's first of all remember what we mean by a graph in general, right? So a graph, remember, of any sort of an equation is just what? A visual representation of it. It's the collection of all the points that satisfy the equation, right? The collection of all the points where if x is the input, y is the corresponding output, right? Is the correspondence between those points is is need, is given by that equation, right? The input and the output, the x and the y values, right? So let's just for a second uh, consider example an example of uh, a relation, right? I'm I'm, like, I'm going to let you decide if it's a function, right? So let's just consider uh, an example for a second. Oh, and my pen is being awful again. Almost like it needs to be warmed up or something. Okay, so let's see. There we go. This is a little bit better. Okay, so um, <clears throat> let's consider um, a table of values here for a relation. Okay, so let's say I've got 2 goes to 3, uh, 1 goes to uh, 4, um, how about 3 goes to 5, and 2 goes to 0, and how about um, 0 goes to uh, 1. Okay, so this is a relation. Remember, it's just a correspondence between two sets of numbers, right? 2 goes to 3, 1 goes to 4, 3 goes to 5, 2 goes to 0, and 0 goes to 1. This is a relation. Uh, we could draw the mapping, the little bubbles with the arrow if we want, but uh, the arrows, I mean but we don't have to. We can just look at this as a table of values. Is this relation a function? So remember what we do to determine if it is a function, what do you have to do? You have to look to see if there is an input which goes to two different outputs, right? Okay, because so, a function, remember, is it's, it's a special kind of relation and the requirement for a function is that every input, every single input, goes to exactly one output. Exactly one. Not more than one, just one, right? So let's see. Uh, and a quick way to determine this with a table is to look for duplicates in the x input column right here. Notice that there are two twos right here. Notice that two goes to three and two goes to zero. So because the value of two, the input of two has two outputs, we know that this thing is not a function. Okay, so not a function. Okay, not a function, but let's think about what this would, the graph of this thing, what it would look like, right? Because we can graph uh, a relation right, like this. We can just, all we need to do is plot the points here, right? To see what they would look like in the xy plane. So let's do a little plotting here. Okay, so let's see, let's plot the point 2, 3. So 1, 2, uh, 1, 2, 3. So I put a little dot right there. Uh, 1, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. 3, 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there, 2, 0, so maybe I'll put a mark right there for each of these, there we go, there we go, just to make them a little bit uh, darker for you to notice, there we go, and 0, 1, there we go. So here's our one, two, three, four, five dots, right? Our five points that are uh, given with this relation here. Okay, so uh, let's see if we notice anything interesting about this collection of dots that is given, that gives the relation, right? It's not a function, okay? But notice something here, okay? What, 
for what reason was it not a function? Remember that was it was not a function because two went to three and zero, right? Two went to three and two went to zero. So that's bad. That made it not a function. If we look at where those points are on the graph here, that means there's one right here and there's one right here. Yes? Okay. If you think about that for a second, notice that the x value, right? That's the the inputs here are on the x axis, right? Uh, the value of 2 right here, the input of 2, has two output values for y, right? And y, remember, is on the vertical axis here. So inputs are on the horizontal, outputs are on vertical. The input of 2 here has two corresponding outputs, right? It has a, uh, it has a 0 output and it has a 3 output here, okay? Well, that's exactly what violated this relation uh, being a function, right? It can't be a function because there are these two points, right? Notice that in terms of their relationship to each other, they are directly above each other, right? And think about that for a second. If you ever have a graph that has that happening, can that graph represent a function? Hmm. Well, let's, let's think about it for a second. If we consider a different example, Let's just, let me not even give you a table of values or anything. Let me just draw a sketch of something, right? So what if I did um, a graph of an equation? I'm not saying it's a function or not. I'm just going to graph something, right? Uh, let me see. What if I did something like this? What if I did, um, something like that, right? This is a graph of a relation, right? It's a relation because if you choose, if there's an x value, right, it has a corresponding y value, right? We could have made some huge list of, of a table here to say maybe what x is, then y is something. If x is something, y is something, right? So there's a relation here, right? If x is something here, then y is something here. Um, and of course, there's lots of places to do that on here. Oh, there's lots of points, okay? And the points are what gives the relation. But could this thing be a function? So let's take a certain value of x here. I don't know even what this value of x could be. We could just call it something. How about let's call this 3? It doesn't even matter, right? If 3 is your input, how many outputs are there for this equation, for this relation? Well, let's see. Let's get a different color here. If the input is 3, then there's this point, and then there's this point on the graph, right? Yeah, these two points here. And notice what that means is that that point right there would have an ordered pair three comma some kind of a y value here, right? We could call this maybe like uh, four, and this could be like six, right? Okay. So th those points right there, that first point right here, its ordered pair would be maybe three, four. Yeah. This ordered pair right there would have its description being three, six. Again, I just chose those numbers. I'm just making up the example. Okay. But what's important to notice is that because those two points are directly on top of each other, they have the same input, but they give two different outputs. And right there, that's the, a violation for a, a relation to be a function, right? So that means that this thing can't be a function because it has those two points that have the same input but different outputs, right? And again, they are stacked right on top of each other, right? They are vertical with each other, right? They are one is right on top of the other. Okay, and it turns out that any time that happens uh, on the graph of an equation, that equation cannot represent, or the graph cannot represent uh, a function, right? And so that's really, really, really important. And that's actually an important result and a way for us to tell if a graph represents a function, right? Uh, so we have what's called the vertical line test, which is what we came just sort of observed, but we'll officially state it now, right? So this is the vertical line test, okay? And the vertical line test, if you'd like to see it written in your textbook, this is on page 71, so see page 71, okay? But what it says is that uh, a graph uh, represents a function if every vertical line you're able to draw intersects the graph in at just one place, right? So uh, we can say a graph is, oh, my pen is awful, is a function if uh, 
all vertical lines. Uh, intersect it. Once. Okay. And we can see up here in our example how that is exactly violated, right? So if I take any vertical line, let's take a vertical line, I don't know, let's take it over here. Does that work? Does it hit it twice? No. But as soon as I move closer, ooh, that hits it maybe twice, once, but as soon as I scoot over a little bit, aha! I have hit that graph twice and you don't need to do it again. Right? Once you've shown that you've hit the graph twice with a vertical line, then you are done. You know it's not a function, right? Over here that same thing would happen, right? If I dropped a vertical line down here between those two at those two points at two, I hit it twice, I know it's not a function, right? And so we can keep doing more examples and sketch something else here, something like um, I don't know. Let's be fun and creative about this. Right? I'm just sketching a graph of an equation, of a relation, right? So now let's take a vertical line. Let's see, let's put it right here. Did it hit the graph twice? No. What about here? Did it hit the graph twice? No. But what about here? Did it hit it twice? Oh, it hit it three times. It hit it three times. Once, twice, three times. So that's like even worse, right? <laughs> okay. So because right there you notice it hits it three times, what that means is that for whatever that x value is there, that input, there are three corresponding outputs for that x value, that for that input, okay? Which means that this thing cannot be a function. So not a function. Okay? So this thing can't be a function. Okay? Um, but let's see, let's graph another one, maybe something like this. Let's see, let's now let's try our vertical line test on this thing. Okay, so let's see, let's drop some vertical lines. So let's see, vertical line. Did it hit it once? Yep. Once? Yep. Once? Yep. Once? Yep. Once? Yep. You're probably getting the maybe the idea with this one. Any vertical line you hit on, you lay on top of this graph right here, any, any vertical line you draw, it's only going to hit it one time. Okay, there You can't find a place on here where when you draw a vertical line you actually hit it twice. Okay, And so in order to show that this is a function, you have to not be able to find a place where it hits it twice. Right, So this one is a function because I cannot find a place where if I draw a vertical line I hit it twice. Right. So there's a little bit of an important distinction here, right? To show that something is a function, you have to show that every single vertical line that you draw only hits it one time, right? Okay. But to show something is not a function, it's enough to just draw one vertical line that hits it in more than one place and you're done, right? You don't have to draw lots and lots and lots of lines. You just have to say, aha, there's a place, it hits it more than once, not a function. Okay. But to show it is a function, you have to say, ooh, look at everywhere it's going to be okay. Okay, and that's an important distinction. Okay, so to prepare for our in-class work that we're going to be doing in this section, uh, it's important for you to read an example from your textbook uh, about how we can get information from uh, the graph of a function. Okay, and these are uh, some important um, ways that we can, you know, sort of extract important information from these equations and from the graphs themselves. So what I'd like you to do is for class for Thursday, uh, look at example uh, number two and number three from this section. Examples number two and three. Uh, and these are on pages 72 and 73. Okay, and look at those uh, examples for class for Thursday and we will have our problem set. And that's the only video for section 2.2.